is Jin Kim and today are you a beast or the beauty? Bang. Yes, all of us, I believe we have double side. I don't believe there is only the beauty entire day, entire life. But when there is a stress, stressful and difficult situation and transition, that can provoke us to be the beast towards the people that we love. Today's series is second series from My Soul is in the Safe Place. Uh, first of all, today I'm going to share a short video. It's called the Still Face Experiment. I wanted to observe carefully interaction between this baby and the mother, how things change. Take a look. Babies this young are extremely responsive to the emotions and the reactivity and the social interaction that they get from the world around them. This is something that we started studying 34 years ago when people didn't think that infants could engage in social interaction. In the still face experiment what the mother did was she sits down and she's playing with her baby who's about a year of age. I'm like a girl. And she gives a greeting to the baby, the baby gives a greeting back to her. This baby starts pointing at different places in the world and the mother's trying to engage her and play with her. They're working to coordinate their emotions and their intentions, what they want to do in the world. And that's really what the baby is used to. And then we ask the mother to not respond to the baby. The baby very quickly picks up on this and then she uses all of her abilities to try and get the mother back. She smiles at the mother. She points because she's used to the mother looking where she points. Yeah. The baby puts both hands up in front of her and says, what's happening here? She makes that screechy sound at the mother, like, come on, why aren't we doing this? Even in this two minutes when they don't get the normal reaction, they react with negative emotions, they turn away, they feel the stress of it, they actually may lose control of their posture because of the stress that they're experiencing. It's a little like the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is that normal stuff that goes on, that we all do with our kids. The bad is when something bad happens, but the infant can overcome it. After all, when you stop the still face, the mother and the baby start to play again. The ugly is when you don't give the child any chance to get back to the good is no reparation and they're stuck in that really ugly situation. How did you see this video? This video is very very interesting. This little baby one years old she understands absolutely so many things what's going on around her. She was very very happy smiling beautiful smile because her mother is just just next to her and she can feel my mom is with me emotionally and physically and playing with me she was very very delighted right you could see that and nothing hasn't really changed so much because her mother was there throughout the whole time the presence of her mother physically was there from the beginning to the end but what changed what changes she was there but her emotional connection 
got loose like this and the baby could capture this moment instantly right away and what happened to baby she was started to feel very stressful and she couldn't smile anymore and she tried to point and trying to uh, bring the response from the mother and when she sees her mother is not responding emotionally she start to scream shout and meltdown and she couldn't handle there was there were um, emotional pains that we could see in the baby's being because there was emotional connection that was lost so in many situations we could identify our spouse or our loved one or our family member or friends they are physically present in front of you or next to you but you feel like something is not there they are not there emotionally and when somebody is not there emotionally that can bring a lot of anxiety and stress and disconnection uh, within ourselves that cause a lot of pain and relationship conflict and problem God created our body with so many great intentions there's nothing that's not necessary our eyes our mouth our ears our body and hands he put such a power and influence on everything that we have so I would like to take a look nonverbal emotion a nonverbal communication <laughs> um, and this time I would like to give you a chance to be a counselor as a therapist so there will be a client coming and I want you to prepare a mirror it can be a, a camera to look at yourself to observe how you look when you have conversation with other people right so you can make a pause and get your mirror or camera and put it in front of you and when the client comes and they are going to talk about something then you make a pause in about a minute or two minutes respond to the client okay and observe how you talk to them right okay so ready hi come in hello miss king ah oh, today i feel i don't have a luck why today i had to get injured look at my arms <sighs> there are so many other days but today i have very very important project in my workplace and also in my family today how would i do all these things with this arm injured yeah so this client came with some of the frustration that her arms are injured how was it for you to respond to this client were you able to observe how you talk and was it easy to find the words to respond to this client? First of all, let's have a look of your eyes. Were you able to see what kind of eye response that you gave to the client? Were you able to look at the client or look at the camera, look at the mirror? Or was it feeling kind of uncomfortable that you had to look in the air? Or you were like, okay, what am I supposed to say? You were serious. You were giving a very uh, intense glance. Or you were just comfortable. You felt comfortable. Or did you really express your emotion with your eyes? That, oh my, that must be frustrating. Oh, that's so pity. Did you show your emotion with your eyes or you're like, 
oh, you got injured, I don't care, that's not my business. So you're looking at them like this kind of look. How was your eyes? You know, our eyes brings a lot of communication number very. When you look at somebody or something, that signifies that our attention is there, right? So if you can look at client with a soft look without looking somewhere else, that says something to the client that, oh, this therapist is engaging with me. Her attention is on me. So they can feel more trusted, right? And also the emotion that we show through the eyes. Ah, she's feeling what I'm feeling. Yes, I was frustrated. And she's feeling the frustration by her eyes. And that pulls more of the opening towards the therapist. How was your eye response? Not only to the clients in the normal life. What kind of eye look that do you have? Maybe it's a good time to observe and practice. And second, what about your voice? Was it high pitch or very low pitch? Or did you speak so fast? Or did you speak slow pace? It must be very terrible that you got injured. Did you just talk very fast with the fact? Or, oh, it must be very frustrating and terrible that you got injured. Did you bring some, some emotion in the slow paced, pace uh, voice? Also, our voice, however we put our speed, it can assure and calm other people's anxiety. When we speak soft and slower, it helps other people to feel what they are sharing and also really calm their anxiety and brings peace. What about your gesture and your posture? Did you put some distance, putting your body behind? Or did you come closer as if you are very interested and engaging with this person? Yeah. So our non-verbal communication does so much things to connect with other people. So it's very important to observe and put ourselves to be a safe person. Second thing that I want to have a look is empathy. What is empathy? Empathy is to understand other people's emotion and to share their emotion and what they are going through. We could ask a question, what would it be like if I'm in their shoes? What would it be like if I'm in their situation. When we understand somebody's emotion and what they're going through, and when we read their emotion, their body, sorry, <laughs> their body and their heart can be very, very calm and soothed. And when we pay attention to other people's emotion, they can feel their worth is valuable. You are a very, very worthy person and you are a valuable person. And it, it influences their self-esteem. In one of the techniques in counseling, it's called reflecting the emotion. What does that mean, reflecting? When we see ourselves into the mirror, it reflects our face. We could see our face and things that we couldn't recognize on our face by looking at the mirror that reflects my being, right? So reflecting emotion is when somebody brings, they talk about something, we try to reflect 
their emotion by listening carefully to their conversation. Okay, it sounds like maybe you feel frustrated. Is that right? Is this right? It sounds like you feel very, very worried. It sounds like you're very, very disappointed. Is this right? So we're trying to read their emotion by listening and ask them, is this emotion that you're feeling, is this right? So we're trying to reflect their emotion and they can really feel that I am, um, they, they are really interested in me and they, they know what I'm going through. And they are feeling something with me, so I'm not alone. It can bring a lot of um, connection with the therapist by doing this. So for example, I want to practice with this client who came to see you. You can see the script here. I don't have a lock. Why today I had to get injured? There are so many other days, but today I have an important project in the work and the, in, in the family. How would I do all these things with this arm injured? When this client came here with this uh, sentence, what kind of emotion do you see in this conversation? Yes, it feels irritation, frustration, anxiety, and worry. Mm -hmm. There are many different emotions that you could feel. There's not only one, but you can pick a few of them. And you throw parachuting about that emotion that you think they might feel as your empathy. Okay. Mm. This week, it seems you have many significant projects and events. But you feel worried that this won't go well because of your injured arm. Is it right? So you're reflecting their emotion. And if this is correct, the client will pick it up. Yeah, now I'm at the peak of the finishing the word, work that had been prepared for a long time. And they will share more because they feel understood. Ah, so you get the new information. It's at the finish, finishing time. Hmm? So you can feel, ah, it seems you would feel anxious. What if you could not finish well with your arm when things are not done completely? Is that right? You can ask. So yeah, surely, whenever a day goes by, I feel more fearful and anxious. And the client... Uh, spoke about their emotion from their own words now. I feel more fearful and anxious. How come the time goes by so fast like this? But things on the list seem staying same. What kind of emotion do you see? A lot of anxiety, worries, and yeah, fearful, anxious. Hmm? So you can reflect the emotion again. Yeah, your heart surely feels very fearful and anxious. Worry. Yeah, this is my first time to be a leader in this project. Until my turn, our team did all the great work. I'm scared to hear that our team could not finish the work well because I got leadership position. Oof. So they put, they can really bring it up, the deeper part of who they are, their fear, what they are scared of, fear of failure, she's mentioning. And you could continue to reflect the emotion. Oh, since it is your first project as a leader, you have wanted to do the best. But you got injured and work seems finishing not well and the time is short. So you feel fearful to hear that you're not good enough. You're not enough as a leader. You feel fear of 
fearful to be failing other teams and and to show your result is not cat uh, yeah not good enough is that right so you can reflect the emotion that you hear from their conversation and tentatively you ask is this right is this correct am i hearing you okay and if they say if they seems it's not right then they'll say no but if it's right on they will continue to share more and go deeper into their primary emotion which we will get to later on but the fear is something that we don't want to open up easily unless there is trust and unless there's a safety so if somebody feels understood and heard and seen and known then they will try to go to the deeper place which is the fear yeah so this is a little practice how we can reflect our emotion and brings empathy into the words and to be able to be a person who can empathize very well it's also practice but it's also the experience that internalized us to to live it like this and one of the way that i was introduced which is called emmanuel process emmanuel journey uh, this is amazing method that develop your empathy when you see exodus chapter 3 7 it says then the lord told him you can be sure i have seen the misery of people in egypt i have heard their crisis cries for deliverance from their harsh slave drivers yes i am aware of their suffering so I have come to rescue them from the Egyptian and lead them out of Egypt into their own clean and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. So in Emmanuel process, Emmanuel journal, God with us. There is uh, six ways that you can write down your journal. First, write down ten, ten thankfulness of the day or days or week or year. And you pick up one of the things that you are thankful for and you write, Dear God, I am thankful for blah, 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 blah. And second, my dear daughter, my lovely daughter, Jean. And first, you write to, to God. You, you are writing a letter to God. God, I'm thankful for this and this because of this. Oh, my daughter, oh, I'm glad you are thankful for about this. And it's a uh, words from the Lord. And the third one, you can, you can write down. I see you, I see you, I see you. And the fourth one, I hear you, da da da. And next, I know how important it is for you, I know. And six, I am glad to be with you. I'm glad to be with you. And I accept your weakness tenderly. And next, things that are difficult, I can help you. I can go out, reach out to you and help you. So this is the method. I think I could share a little of uh, the example that I did. So I write, I wrote down uh, my gratitude, uh, just a few things I write down. My uh, daughter's teeth, my free time, the conversation with my son, 
my family, the Switzerland chocolate, and my Korean friends. Dear God, thank you so much for giving me this beautiful family. And you had a special plan that I could live in Switzerland to enlarge my territory. And thank you that you continue to touch my life. Uh, dear daughter Jean, yes, indeed, it's not an easy journey, but I thank you that you trust in me and you continue to go into this way with me. Because you are my daughter, I will continue to teach you and discipline you and prosper you. Jean, I see you, that you I see you, that you take care of your children every day with your full attention. One of the one, some days you try to do it very well, but some other days you treat your children with your roughness and you feel very, very disappointed about how you handle things and you, you feel the failure. I can see your heart. And I hear you that I am doing so much of my work and my best for my children. But how come my children doesn't follow and listen to my way? And you, you feel uh, unfair and you feel lonely. And I hear your voice. I know it is very important for you to take care of your children in a way that you feel wow I'm doing good they are doing good I'm glad that I could be in this way with you at the same time I accept your weakness that sometimes you want to feel everything is well controlled even though it seems it's out of your control Believe in me that I am in control of your life and your family. I can help you. So this is the Immanuel journal that I wrote one of the days. By writing down our 10 thankfulness, our brain is turned on for the relationship. Sometimes when we are so stressed, when we have overwhelming uh, life stress and difficulty, it's so hard for us to be relational because our relationship circuit can be turned off like this. So by being grateful for something, it uh, nourishes our body and our brain to turn on our relationship circuit so that we can connect it to God and hear His voice. So this is uh, very, very, it has changed our relationship, uh, my marriage, a lot by doing this, um, that God is always with us, not only just being with us as a truth that we have to believe, but by writing down, we can see how much He sees us deeply, and He hears us, and He knows us, and when we feel somebody is there, that, he, that we feel being heard and seen and known uh, it heals our heart and it brings us to the place that we want to be more relational and connect with people and i i would like to do emmanuel journal uh, lecture once really fully this is a short version by telling you how powerful it is to give empathy towards other and for us to be able to be empathized to other we need our god who really sees and hear and knows everything from there we, we would really learn how to empathize to other people uh, and the last things one of the technique is counseling uh, it is validation validation uh, we are trying to show other people what you go through, what you feel. It, it, it matters. It makes sense. 
there's no doubt there's no question there's no analysis why would you feel this way no i understand you could feel this way this is just if this is right that you feel this way you think this way we give them the justification that it's all right how you are how you feel how you think right there's no truth or lie so we could say oh this then must be very difficult of course you'd feel this way no wonder why you feel sad and overwhelmed. I understand why you are so upset and why you are so hurt. I must feel the same as you. That must feel that must feel very very hurtful. That must be very sad. That must be very painful. Thanks for opening up your heartbreaking story that's very brave of you thank you so much it's not easy to open that up but you are so brave thanks for sharing your vulnerability so by telling them about this sentence we validate their emotion uh, and they can feel ah okay what i think it, it was hard for me to open up and share and I thought they would judge me that I feel this way, but they don't judge me. They accept me and they even say that this is just that I feel like this. Wow. They can really feel accepted and they can even feel more safe that they can open up even the things that they never shared before because there is no sense of judgment and condemnation. And... And they can feel that anxiety and shame and uh, emotional pain that they've been through. It can really reduce a lot. And one of the good examples that I f personally find from Bible about validation is when Jesus met this uh, woman who did adultery in John chapter 8. Uh, yeah, imagine the situation where people just cut woman at the spot when she did adultery and they drag her out towards Jesus and I assume they came, wow, I'm sure Jesus, he knows all the Torah, he knows all the law of the word, he knows the woman who is in the adultery, they are sentenced to death by the stone we need to stone them to death right so they were like so expecting that Jesus will order them okay let's grab the stone and then she deserved to to be dead okay this is the time okay let's judge you and judge her what she what she did I'm sure everybody was expecting something like this because the law is so strong there but how how shocking how Jesus took her in this situation that who doesn't have sin it's not like she, the woman you're fine go sin again no she he Jesus understood that she could sin we could sin if Sin is the measure of being stoned to death. Everybody needs to be stoned to death. So Jesus understood how sinful as a human being that we could commit sins like this, but he didn't focus on sin. But he focused, focused on woman as, as his own and, he, and, and he, as his door. And he used this to me techno technique about normalization in, in counseling yeah all the all the marriage is tough even me i'm the couple therapist my marriage oh my god my goodness last four years has been tough even though i study i i've seen so many people i counsel them i i put them back together but the marriage wedding international culture oh there's the transition of children, marriage is tough. So I always tell cons uh, the client, even myself, yeah, couple is tough. We thought about separation. 
like you do because it's tough so Jesus is normalizing to the woman and people and he's not judging her to, to death like okay give how horrible you are that you deserve to death no yes you could you could sin like other people who can throw the stone to you everybody has sin normalizing her sin yet I believe because she felt such a deep acceptance and the grace and non-judgment embracement I'm sure she wouldn't go back to sin again I'm sure she felt such a deep assurance and love and forgiveness and acceptance that she never experienced. I believe that would change her, that she would not go back to sin. So validation, when you talk to people or see the clients, Oh, why would you feel like this? No, you shouldn't feel like this. It, you could feel this way. Yeah, I understand. Maybe I, I cannot feel that way, but you could because this is you, your emotion. I validate you. I, I cherish you. I value you, what you feel. You are not abnormal cuckoo. You feel what you feel and I accept. Give them room. To feel and think and live. Many, many people come to therapist with a lot of list. What my husband or wife have done wrong. And this list is filled up too much that, okay, now it's time to stone to death for them. And... Please, therapist, give some judgment how wrong they are, who are the wrong people. That's what they want sometimes. But let's and we want to punish other people because of those least. And I was one of them, too. That my husband tried so hard to love me and to support family. But there were so many lists of things that I wrote. That you, you're not good enough. You're not. You're failing me. Look at these socks. Look at these dishes. All those little detail. But I couldn't see the big, bigger part of his heart. What matters in the relationship is heart connection. Uh, by doing a lot of uh, journal to be thankful for my husband, now I'm in the place where, wow, my husband is doing so much for family and for me. But before I start to see what's lacking, what's missing, but we have to put us out from this judgment way of interacting with other people. But really uh, feeling connected that I see you, I hear you, I know you. We should put our effort to be connected from heart to heart that brings such a joy and peace and shalom in our body in my, and in our spirit, in our mentality. So let's think about Jesus who has accepted us with our all kinds of sins. Yes, we, well, that's, that's, the, that's the ultimate model that we can follow after. And I believe there is a way that we can be so connected and restore in marriage and family. Even though the culture might be different, language might be different, 
it is tough battle because the Satan doesn't want us to be united but it's worthwhile and precious time so thank you so much if you listen until the, not, until the end and I hope your um, yeah your relationship will be well connected and you will feel seen and heard and known by God and people around you. Ciao!